This is the first in a series of problems for the course where we will be calculating the electric field due to continuous charge distributions. So what that means is it, we are no longer dealing with point charges, we're dealing with charge that is going to be spread out either over a rod, straight, curved, or a ring, or a disc, or a sheet of charge. So this will be the foundation for the methods that you want to use for all of these problems. Okay, so for this particular one we're going to start with a rod that lies on the x-axis with one end a distance d from the origin. Length of the rod is L. This is our x-axis and the rod is uniformly charged along its length. Okay, so there's our diagram. The point P where we want the field is here at the origin. And so I like to make that really clear that what we're after here is that we want E here. Okay, step two is to divide the rod into small elements. Now, we know that for a point charge, Q, the electric field a distance R from the charge is E is K Q over R squared and R hat. That's for individual point charges but what this rod is essentially is a collection of a whole bunch of tiny little point charges and so we have to identify our point charges as little elements called DQ. Okay, so we'll divide this, I like to use red here. So here's our DQ. And that's a little bit of charge. Okay, and now you can just think of that as a point charge, go over to the origin, and the electric field due to that DQ <coughs> would point left because it's away from a positive charge, and we'll call that DE. Now the distance from this bit of charge over to the origin is x. Go back to black here. And that's why we set it up like that, so that that makes the geometry a little bit easier. Okay, so there's our diagram. Now, if the electric field due to a, a, a point charge q is kq over r squared, then the electric field due to a little bit of charge dE is k dq over r squared. Now, because this point's left, we're going to make this a vector. I'm going to put negative i hat, because it's on the x-axis. Okay, now in this case, r is just exactly equal to x. Often it won't be, but in this case it is. Okay, now, the field from each of these little bits of charge, like if you look at what's going on with this line of charge, the dq at this end is quite close, so that would have quite a big dE. Did they call that dE1 if this was dQ1? And then the next little piece, dQ2, would be, because it's a little bit further away, it would have a slightly smaller electric field, dE2. And so on, as we move along the rod, all the dEs that we're trying to add together all have different lengths. That's why we have to integrate. So by the time you get to the end, you're so far away that the last little DE is tiny. So what we need to do to get the net field is to integrate, and that is a summation. So the total field is the addition, the summation of all the little DEs. And so it is the summation of K DQ over R squared negative I hat. Now they all point in the same direction. That is a vector sum. But the fact that they all point in the x direction, it now becomes just a magnitude sum. So let's pull out what's constant here. <clears throat> the negative i hat direction is constant. k is constant. And we're left with dq over r squared. Now, can you do that integral? Well, no. Not the way it looks like that. You cannot do that integral because you've got a q here and you've got an r here. That's like trying to do the integral dy over x squared. Can you do that? No. Unless you know x in terms of y, or if you know x is constant, you can't do integrals where the letters for the d 
something are different than the other variables in the equation. Okay, so this is where we're going to have to be introducing charge densities in order to deal with that dq. There are three charge densities that we'll see in this course. One is a linear charge density, one is an area charge density, and one is a volume charge density. But for now, because this is a long skinny rod, we're going to define lambda to be the charge density, and this is going to be linear. Okay, so this is going to be defined to be <clears throat> charge over length in general. Now, if you have uniform charge density, <clears throat> you can use the total charge for this. So the whole total charge is Q, and the total length is L. And so because this is constant, you could go Q over L, and that's fine. However, if we're doing just a little bit of charge, dQ, we have to determine what this little bit of length is going to be. And so let's draw this down here again. We have this little dQ, and we're going to make the length of dQ dx. Okay, so the charge density for us we can write also as a little bit of charge over a little bit of length. And that's the same value because it is uniform here. Okay, so that's, we need that to get rid of the dq up here in this integral because we can't integrate that with the dq there. Now we've already established that little r equals x because of the geometry of the way that rod is lying on that x-axis. So let's sub these two things back now into this integral. And we'll see that it becomes a very simple integral when we do that. So we still have the negative i hat, we've got the k. Now instead of dq, solve this, you'll see that dq is just lambda dx. Okay, so from here we have that dq is lambda dx. Just cross multiply there. And then we have x squared because r equals x. Okay, so this is looking much better. Now, in physics we always have limits of integration, so we need to know where x starts and where x ends as we sum over this rod. So you go back to your rod and you see here that it starts, x starts at x equals d and goes over to x equals d plus l. So our limits of integration over this rod would be from d to d plus l. Okay, the physics is done, the rest is just math. So lambda is constant, so we can bring that out, negative i hat k lambda and then they're just going to write that as x to the negative 2 dx from d to d plus l. Okay, so we have negative i hat, k lambda, integrate x to the negative 2, add 1, divide by the new power, put in the limits of integration, and we have that the electric field now, um, I can put those two negatives together, so I've got i hat k lambda 1 over d plus l minus 1 over d. Now I do know it points left, so the thing in the brackets is actually a negative number, so I'm just going to tidy that up a bit. I'm going to pull the negative out again, k lambda, and I'm going to take that to a common denominator, and I'm going to have l over d times d plus L. Okay, we're getting close, but remember if you look back at the original problem, you're given the total charge on the rod and you're given the length of the rod, but you're not given lambda. You're not allowed to keep lambda in your answer because you weren't given that in the problem. You must get rid of this. And that will be a common mistake that you'll forget to get rid of this. Get rid of this because it isn't given in the original problem. And you always have to check back for the variables that you're given in the original problem before you write your final answer. Okay, but we know that lambda is Q over L. We're given Q, we're given L, and so we see we've got lambda L there. Lambda times L is just equal to Q. So now I'm going to sub that in for the final answer 
and we get negative i hat k q over d onto d plus l. Okay, and that's the final answer.